Today, what we're gonna do is take a look at the curves filter inside of All In Photo Raw and some of the things that you can do. I'm gonna explain so that way you can go and troubleshoot this and test it out in your own edits. So let's jump into it. All right, so here we are inside of All In Photo Raw and I've already added a curves filter. It's the only filter that's on this image. Now, this image is a little dull. And before we get into editing the image, I wanna go over what is inside of the actual curves filter. So the very first thing that you have here is from the left moving to the right, you have the darkest blacks in your shadows and then as well as how much black is actually introduced into the image, right? So I pull this more to the right, you can see I am putting more and more black into this image, all right? now. The opposite end here, as I move this up, I am removing black from the image. All right, and now you can see that I'm adding more white. And of course, the uh, opposite end here is all of the white. If I pull this all the way down, I start to remove white from the image and it gets really, really dark. I'm adding more black. And then as I move this over to the left, it gets really, really bright, and I'm adding in more white. Now let's go ahead and reset that. That is the equivalent to the levels adjustment inside of other editing software. So it's already baked into the curve, okay? Now the curve is also broken up into shadows, midtones, and highlights. And it goes up in this uh, diagonal direction, if you will. So you have your blacks and then halfway up or just a little bit up, you have inside of this little area, your shadows. And then in this area, you have your midtones. And then in this area, you have some highlights. And then finally you get all the way to your whites. So keep in mind where you are placing your points on the curve as you move through. Now, one of the most common things to do with a curve adjustment is to add contrast inside of the tone, all right? So what we're gonna do is make our shadows a little bit darker by adding a point in our shadow section and then pulling it down, and then make our highlights a little bit brighter by putting a point in our highlight section and dragging that up. And if I turn this off and on, you'll see that the image is a little dull and now it has a little bit more punch all I did was I moved the tonal contrast around in the image uh, at the pixel level. That's why the curves adjustment is so powerful. Now let's go ahead and reset this. Now, if I wanted to fade this image, all I would have to do is click on the black point and start to drag that up. Now, if at any point, I think that this is just way too faded. I'm losing too much of the black information in my image. I have two options. I can pull this over to the right. And as you see, I'm adding in more fine black detail, but the image is still maintaining a little bit of its fade. And as I bring this up and uh, you'll see that I'm taking away more of the black from the image. But as I move this more to the right, I start to bring that back in and this makes its own effect, all right? Now, you wanna be careful with the way that you do this because uh, you can mess up your images if you over utilize the curve, uh, but you can get a lot of really cool uh, exposure adjustments by messing with the curve as you can see here. So I really, really recommend that you just go and you play around with this because every image is going to respond differently um, and that's something that you're just gonna have to get used to. Now, one of the things, if I again wanted to fade this, what I could also do is, if I don't wanna add more black because that's just gonna crush the image, I can just pull down in the shadow area, right? And that makes a little bit more gradual adjustment as you can see, that's the, the purpose of the curve is to make these gradual. So I've gone ahead and I've made this adjustment. And now if I pull up on the highlights, I get a little bit more contrast in there. 
And there you have something that looks a little bit uh, more presentable. So if I turn this off and then turn it back on, it's a much more subtle uh, adjustment. And as you can see, it's just uh, making the image look a little bit better. Now, I'm gonna reset this again because there are three other channels inside of your curves adjustment filter. You have the red channel, which controls your reds. If you move this up, you add in red. And if you pull this down, then you're adding in cyan, okay? Cyan is just another type of blue or it's a form of blue. Uh, and then green, you can move this up and you're adding in green into, right now I'm, I'm adding green into the midtones, a lot of it. Uh, and then I can pull it down and I can add in magenta. All right, magenta is sort of like a red. It's like red and it's like a purplish red. All right, uh, you can see what that looks like. And this works really well if you're trying to warm up a photo. And I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, and then, of course, you have your blue channel. If I move this up, I'm going to add in blue into my image. And if I pull this down, then I'm going to add in some cyan, uh, or I'm sorry, yellow, not cyan. I'm going to add in yellow to the image. Now, what's really cool about this is you get a lot of control over the way that your image looks. So if I want to add cyan, and let me just reset this real quick. We'll go back to blue. And if I wanted to add in a little bit of cyan into my image, and I'm adding it into my shadows, I could just come to the blue channel, throw in some cyan, and that's really gonna help with these rocks a little bit. Now, if I feel like it's addressing too much and it's going out of the shadows, then I can add another control point on the curve, and I can just pull that up. So now I am reintroducing blue back into the image, and you, you have to do this in a balanced manner, all right? Now, I can turn this off and I can turn this back on and you can see that I'm adding in more cyan in this shadowed area. Now, if I wanted to come over here to my green channel and I wanted to warm this photo up a little bit more, what I'll do is I'll just add in some magenta into the highlights um, and you can make multiple points and you just mess around until you find the look that you're going for, right? Uh, knowing where these items are is what's going to help you. Now, obviously I have made this photo a little too dark, so I'm going to come over to my tone and I am going to boost the mids just a little bit by clicking and dragging in the center here and pulling that up. Now, if I turn this off and on, I have completely changed the grade of the image. Now, if I wanted this to be faded, all I have to do is come back to my tone curve and I can fade it like so, and then I can pull down. And now I'm starting to get a little bit more of that cinematic approach. Uh, there is an infinite number of things that you can do here. Now, what I want to make mention uh, as you can see, my histogram, it, it goes blank for some reason. I don't know why, just a bug with on one. But if I click on info and then I go back to levels, I can see my histogram again. The way that you, or what you do in the curves really does affect your histogram. So if you're not fully understanding how to read a histogram, just stay tuned. I'll do a video on how to read that. Um, but you can also do a search and see how to read a histogram. It's very important that you learn that because as I make these adjustments, you can see that I'm affecting my histogram and that goes with every single channel. So if I boost up the reds, look at how the reds separate from all those other colors uh, because I'm putting so much red information. And then same thing if I pull it down and I start to add in more of the uh, cyan, look at what happens with my red channel as it moves over to the left. I'm putting more information from the red channel into the uh, the shadows 
especially as I move this further down on the scale. So uh, you can see that there's a ton of power baked into the curves effect now uh, or the curves filter. Now, one of the most common things that people do, I'm just going to reset this, is the S curve. I do this. I find myself doing this quite often. Um, and that's essentially, you know, maybe you'll just pull down the opacity. Uh, I like to over bake my curve uh, and then just work it in with my opacity to the point that I, I'm comfortable with it, right? Because now I have complete control over how much of this is showing. Now, if you get to a point and you're like, you know what? I really like the way that this curve looks. Well, what you can do is click on this little downward arrow and you can save a new style. And I'll save this as FWP contrast and we're at 77 percent so i'll just put 77 hit save so now if i reset that and pretend i'm on another photo i can literally just add the curves filter and say you know what i like to start at my contrast 77 and now i have that put onto my image and then i can maneuver however i want now what you see here is i actually have quite a few um different contrast or really just different uh, tone curves. One of my favorite tone curves that I use is the matte look, which comes out looking a little bit like that. And then I can just pull this back to my content, uh, to what I want it to look like. So that's with it off and on a few times. And I can just keep pulling this until I get to the place that I want it to be. Now, this point here is not where I would particularly care for it to be on this image. I would actually move this a little bit further down and then I would go deeper because I want more contrast in my faded look, right? Now, this is why the opacity slider comes in so handy because I can just pull this out and open up the image the way that I want it to be. Now, what you can also do with the curves filter is you can apply a blend mode with it. And this comes in extremely handy. I'm gonna go with the soft light demo. Uh, and as you can see, I threw in a ton of contrast all over the place. And this is what the curve looks like. Now, if I come up here to my gear icon and you see that I'm on soft light, what I can do is select overlay and it gets even more contrasty and then if I go to soft light, it's less contrast. Uh, messing with the blend modes and affecting your tone curve really comes in handy. Uh, I highly recommend if you're trying to do something contrasty to put it on soft light. Soft light gives the most natural look to your uh, tone curve. Now, if you want to go more aggressive, then absolutely go with overlay. This is going to be like overkill, uh, but Again, you have the opacity slider, so you can just pull this out. Um, and then what's also cool is you have a mask, so you can invert it. And what I would do with this is actually play with a lower opacity, maybe around 30%, somewhere in there. And I would just paint this in uh, on areas where I really want a little bit more contrast to uh, affect the image, right? So maybe on these rocks right here and this big rock area right here. And maybe I'll paint a little bit more on this area because I really want it there. And I have no rhyme or reason why I'm doing this. You definitely want to have a rhyme and a reason to the way that you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. But uh, if I turn this off and on, you can see how this really impacts the image. Then of course I could also hit luminosity or lumen and let this select the image However, uh, you know, the, the darkest points and start pulling this around. Maybe I'll go something like this. 
pull up on that a little bit. And now I'm getting a good portion of the image. I always like to feather this a little bit because, uh, and th this is just a personal preference, but feathering your mask really makes a difference. So when you have something, and I'll pull it all the way up because I'm only targeting certain areas. Uh, if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see what it's really doing is pulling out the texture in this rock over here. There's so many things that you can do with the curves filter. Another thing that people like to use the curve for, if I come back to my levels here uh, and turn on my clipping indicator, you can see that I have a ton of information that's getting burned over here in the highlights. Well, one of the easiest ways of fixing that is by putting a curves filter on and just pulling that down. I didn't even pull that down a whole lot. Uh, I pulled it down just a little bit and now I am recovering that information. Uh, not to the point that it's going to print great, uh, like with a bunch of detail, but it will actually render as some form of color. So when you go to print your image, you don't get these weird white spots. So we're just scratching the surface, but I really wanted to put this video together because I know that this is something a lot of people have questions on and they're curious about. So if you found this video helpful, smash the like button. If you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button. Until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.